Hi friends, Miss Brown here, and I'm gonna continue reading this book, Lulu and the Brontosaurus. If you have not watched the first four chapters of this book, I highly suggest doing that now because we are gonna be reading chapters five, six, and seven today. And I don't want you to be left behind and I want you to know what's going on. All right, are we ready to get started? Let me see, do you have on those listening ears still? Some of you never even took them off. Wow, keep those listening ears on and let's get started. Actually, before we get started, let me catch you up on Lulu. So what happened the first four chapters was Lulu was being a brat and her birthday was coming up and she was so used to getting anything and everything that she wanted and there was a really big present that she wanted for her birthday. She wanted a, yes, she wanted a brontosaurus. Brontosaurus, a type of dinosaur. And what do her parents say to her wanting a brontosaurus? Yep, they said no, they said no. So what did she do? What did she do when they told her that she couldn't have a brontosaurus? Exactly she left <laughs> she left and did her parents care no they did not care so that is where we left off and so let's continue going chapter five but lulu hadn't forgotten that she was going to get herself a brontosaurus and luckily for lulu there was a great big forest not too far from her house the animals in that forest had never bothered anybody because nobody had ever bothered them but watch out, creatures. Here came Lulu, trudging through the forest, swinging her small suitcase back and forth and in a quite a loud voice that was sure to wake up the napping animals from their naps, singing this song. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna get a Bronto, 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 Brontosaurus for a pet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna get a Bronto, 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 so it's for a pet. Someone's excited. The forest that Lulu was trudging through was overgrown with trees whose branches scratched her face and whose roots she tripped over, but Lulu hardly noticed because she was thinking just one thought what do you think she was thinking oh yeah and you know what that was so on she went swinging her suitcase and singing her song too loud and annoying all the creatures in the forest and being the same big pain out there that she was back home in her house until also there she is going through the forest there she is again Ooh, I'm noticing something on this picture. Until slithering down from the branch of a tree came a long, fat, brown, black snake who had been peacefully snoozing till Lulu woke him up. Sleepy and grumpy and hissing and exceedingly nasty hiss, he wrapped himself around Lulu, around and around and tighter and tighter and told her she'd really be sorry that she had awakened him. What is he going to do? I'm going to squeeze you dead, he said. Okay, so snakes don't talk, but in my story they do. Remember, this is fiction. And Lulu said, not if I squeeze you deader. Lulu. So Lulu squeezed the snake hard and the snake yelled, ow, and quickly unwrapped himself from Lulu. And Lulu wiping some snake sweat from the palms of her hands, um, went on trudging deeper into the forest. Chapter six. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna, gonna get a brontosaurus, a bronto, bronto, brontosaurus for a pet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a bronto, bronto, brontosaurus for a pet. Also, that was her squeezing. Oh my goodness. She's a trip, isn't she? 
Singing her brontosaurus song in a louder and louder voice, Lulu was waking up nappers all over the forest. Some were annoyed, some were extremely annoyed. Among the extremely annoyed was a silky, slinky lady tiger who yawned and stretched and rubbed her bright green eyes and then, with a ferocious roar, sprung out from behind some trees and pounced on Lulu. I wonder how she's going to get out of that. Oh, Lulu. You're a big pain, the tiger said. So I'm going to eat you up for my afternoon snack. Uh-oh, said Lulu. I'm bonking you on the head. And swinging, swinging with all her might, Lulu bonked the tiger with her suitcase. The tiger yelled, ow, and fell down in a pitiful black and orange striped heap on the forest floor. Lulu brushed off a few tiger hairs that were stuck to the side of her tiger bonking suitcase and went on trudging deeper into the forest. Wow, Lulu is strong and brave, it seems. Chapter seven, <gasps> what's gonna happen? As the afternoon turned into late afternoon and then into early evening, Lulu trudged even deeper into the forest. And when she felt hungry, she opened her suitcase and took out a pickle sandwich. When she felt cold, she took out a sweater and socks. And when it got buggy, she opened up her suitcase and took out some bug spray and sprayed. She really thought of everything when she packed up, didn't she? She was feeling a little tired, but she kept trudging and swinging her suitcase and singing her song. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna get me a bronto, 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 brontosaurus for a pet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna get a bronto, 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 brontosaurus for a pet. Now, a big black bear who liked listening to the music that insects make in the early evening couldn't hear their song because Lulu's was louder. Plus, a lot of the insects were deader because Lulu kept on spraying them with her spray. This made him mad, then madder, then madder than that, he growled a thunderous growl and then he lumbered heavily down the forest path and stood on his two hind legs in front of Lulu. Waving a big clawy paw in her face, he said, You're interrupting my favorite program. Please don't, don't give me an argument. In my story, bears are allowed to have favorite programs. So I'm going to scratch you to pieces with my claws. What's gonna happen? Lulu glared at the big black bear and put her hands on her hips. Nobody's scratching me, she told the bear. Then she jumped as high as she possibly could in the air. Then she landed as hard as she possibly could on his foot. Oh my goodness. The bear yelled, ow! and went limping away as fast as Bear could limp with one stomped foot. And after shaking some broken bear toenails off the bottom of her bear stomping shoes, Lulu went trudging deeper into the forest. That concludes chapter seven. What were all the animals that she came across? The first one was the, yes, the snake. And then it was the, the tiger, good. And then it was the, do you remember? It was the bear, it was the bear. And how was she getting past each of these animals? What did she do? Talk to your grown up about things that she did in order to get past all these creatures. I can't believe that she's surviving this long in the forest without a grown up. I wonder what's gonna happen next. If you wanna hear what happens next in this story, 
write me a note in the comment or send me messages so that way I know you want to hear how this ends. Have the best day ever. Miss Brown, over and out. Goodbye.